Hey my great friends, welcome to another Django video. Today we will try to create a simple Django project together. A project that you might edit and tweak as a freelancer. This may work with doctors or other healthcare providers who are looking for an online presence. For the template, I used a bootstrap to create this design only for the purpose of this course. So I won't explain how did I create it and you can find the folders for both the Django project and the bootstrap template in my github account link in the description. On the home page, we see this hero image with the call to action button. This is where visitors can make an appointment. We will see how that works in a second. On the top, we have the menu bar. So as you see, we have four sections on the home page. Our team, services, testimonial and contact us. The other two are the same, the manage link leads, leads to another page to manage the appointments. It's only for the admins and here admins can see the number of the new appointments in format of notifications. Let's scroll down. I won't talk about how the design is ugly. This tutorial is meant for Django. The contact form is working. Visitors can send emails to the doctors from here in case they are not interested in making an appointment. We could create a better success page, but this will, will make this tutorial longer. Now, if we go back to the home page, let's see how a user can make an appointment. So the visitor will see this form and he has to fill it. All the fields are required, only the request is optional. There he can add an extra information about his health situation or whatever he wants. Once he submits, he will see the success message. And as you see on the top, the number of the notification has been incremented. I am already logged in as admin. So let's see the manage app uh, page. Here we see all the appointments. Let's visit the last one of them. Here is it, Maria. Now let's give it a date for her appointment. If we click on accept, an email is sent automatically and the number of notification decremented. And another thing, we can no longer see the form of adding the date for that patient. That's how we, we know which appointment has been accepted. If I check my email now, you will see that I got a confirmation of the appointment. Here is the name of the patient and some extra texts. And here the date of the appointment. One last thing I want to mention, the design is responsive. So if you are going to use it, it won't take too much time to improve it. Now let's move to the Django work. So let's see how we have what we have inside our bootstrap template folder. We have three HTML templates, the appointment template, the email template, the home page and the manage appointment. Also we have a list of images that we already used in the design and the other are static files, most of them from bootstrap. I only have one custom CSS. 
so let's create another folder for Django and let's get inside of it the first thing we need to do for each Django project is creating a virtual environment we will use a tool called virtual environment we install it this way once the installation is done we can create a virtual environment by typing virtual env then the name of the folder that will hold our packages now as you see we have another folder to activate it we use this command for both linux and mac machines source the name of the virtual environment then bin and activate if you are using windows then you will have different files inside your virtual environment and you can activate it in this way by passing the virtual environment name then scripts and activate we see our virtual environment folder name inside of two parentheses this means it is activated and we can move forward now we need to install django python dash m pip install django i guess it didn't work with the dash m flag let's try with only pip install and it is installing django now if we type pip freeze we will see the four installed packages that we need to run a django project using django admin we create a new project the dot in the end to create the manage file and the project folder in the current folder as you can see here now we use the manage.py file to create a new app i will name it doctor here is our app folder now we can open the entire project folder with vs code which is my favorite favorite code editor if you are using it make sure you have the python extension installed it will make your life easier the first thing we will start with in our django project is updating the settings.py file on the top we don't need these comments for the secret key which you should keep safe for that we use the an environment variable where you save some sensitive data like the secret key or passwords for this project i will use the python decouple module We import it this way. To load the variable we want, we need first to create a .env file and save our data there. We create a variable, then we pass its value, no spaces between the variable and the value and no need for double or single quotes in the settings we use the config function and we pass the variable name next we tell django where to look for templates we already created the templates folder For the static files, we have two cases. The first one where debug set to true. This way, Django needs the static files there. To 
to serve the static files locally. And it's for production or to collect static, we need to specify the static route. In the urls.py file, we need to include our Dr. App URLs file. So we put all the URL patterns of our app in there. Okay, moving to our app. Let's create the URLs file. We paste the same content. We don't need the admin, only the path. Well, let's create a simple function that renders the home page. That's for testing. Okay, in the views.py file, we create a new function, we name it home, then we need to import HTTP request, we return a simple HTTP request. Now in the URLs, we import that view and we create a URL pattern for that home page. Now we can test this out. But first, we need to migrate the project. Then we run the server. If we visit our local host with the port 8000, we can see this message, so everything is working. Now we can convert our static website into a dynamic Django web app. In the bootstrap template folder, we need to copy all the files in our Django folder. Then replace the CSS, images and JavaScript folders in the Django static folder. And HTML files replace them in the template folder we have everything in the django folder so let's create the base template django comes with a great feature which is template extending which means we can use the same parts of the html for different pages and this is the real meaning of don't repeat yourself so what we will have in the base template, I guess the head, the hero section, and the scripts. On the top we need to load the static tag. We use it to load the static files. 
this is how Django serves the CSS and images and so on. We do the same thing for the CSS and JavaScript files. And it's optional, but we can create extra blocks in the base template. Block is used for overriding specific part of the template. So we can create this style block and we can use it in any other template to add styles for that specific page. Same thing with the scripts. If you want to add a custom call to action for each page, we can create a block for that too and replace it inside the hero section. And in the home page, we can delete all the code that we already have in the base page. And on the top, we extend that page. But we need to create a block for the page content. Then we added the content of the home page between this block. And we can add the call to auction div to this the home page since we deleted it on the base template. And for this tutorial, I will use only the class based views API. I will use the template view class. We import it. Then we create a new home view class. We pass the template view and we need only one line of code to render the home page, which is the template name. Then we import the home template view in the URLs and we need to add it dot as view since it's not a function based view now we run the server and check it out we see an error it comes from the home page Yes, we don't have that view yet. Now let's refresh. And our website is working. But as you see, as you can see, we can't see any images. As I said, images are static files and we need to serve them using the Django static tag. So here we need to look for all images and use the static tag to load them. In case you have lots of images, then this will take some time.
and for the header image in the CSS we can simply provide the full path of the image okay we save and refresh the page we see another error we didn't load the static tag in the home page let's update it now everything looks cool let's start the backend work the first thing i will start with is the easiest one which is the contact form in the settings file we need to update a few things so django can handle settings email sending emails I will search for Django mail. I still can't remember everything, so I need to get back to the documentation. I am looking for one line. Just we need to add the we need that line to let Django handle sending emails. This is it, the SMTP email backend. Then we need to ha we have to add more variables. The email host, which is Gmail SMTP server. Since I will use my Gmail account to send emails the email port is 587 for gmail then the email use tls which is true for gmail and finally for the email I will use to send emails. I will save the values of the address and the password in the .vmv file. So you can't see it. now we need to update the html form we have no much to do we need to set action to the current page and we need to add the csrf token tag for the csrf protection it's required for all the post forms then we use then we use the names of the inputs input fields to get the values after submitting the form the last step is updating the views file here we handle all the post requests of that page inside the post function of the this class We need to get the data from the contact form. We have the name of the visitors, his email, and the message he wrote.
then we will use the email message to send the email we have to import it from Django core then we pass the data we got from the form the subject I don't know what to write here then the body of the email there is a trick here the visitor sends us an email right but we can't ask him we can't ask him for his email credentials to send that email instead i will use my email address to send that message to myself and i will reference to the visitors email in the reply to section so i will be the sender and the receiver know that the receiver option has to be list and finally we pass the visitor email address to the email to argument then we send the email and we can return a simple HTTP response to tell the visitor that the email has been sent successfully let's run the server refresh the page let's go to the contact section I will send an email I see the success message here if I check my email I used in the Django project I see that I got an email from myself but if I click on reply I will reply to the visitors email that's it so now let's let the visitor make an online appointment okay we update the appointment template we get rid of the extra code we extend the base template here the style should be inside the style block we created earlier in the base.html if you want you can create another CSS file but I wanted to show you how blocks work on, on Django and the content of the page inside the content block and finally the javascript code inside the script co block and by the way this javascript codes is to validate the form the appointment form then on the views we will use the template view again we change the name of the class and the template name as simple as that and in the urls we import that view and change the path 
we make it make an appointment and change the view name to appointment In the home page, we update the href of the call to auction link. If we refresh the page and click on vault link, we will go to the appointment page but i don't like the height of the hero section we can fix it in the css file but also we can fix it using a little trick in the base.html we can check for the request url path if the path contains appointment which means that we are in the appointment page we reduce the height of the header section up to 300 pixels maybe now let's refresh and this looks better we can see the form clearly we don't have to take care about the validation of the form. We already have the JavaScript code that handles that. So let's make this form work. In the appointment template, we change the form. Method is post and action set for this page. Always add the CSRF token tag to any post form in Django. All fields come with names, so we can retrieve data from them in the backend. I will change the field name of the mobile and the request. We have the submit button and we are ready to go next job in the views file in here we create a post function that takes care of the post requests of that page we need to get the data from the form the first name then the last name the email the mobile number and the request but we already have the request variable so it's better if we change this to message to avoid any error then we can display a one-time notification message to tell the visitor about the state of the appointment he made for that we use the Django messages framework so let's import it we added a message we passed the request the type or the tag of the message it can be error 
then the body of the message for testing I will print the request of the visitor then we can use the HTTP response redirect to redirect to the home page In the template, I already have a div to display the messages, but we display them only in case we have a message. Here we loop over all the messages and we display the content of the message. Let's give it a try. We fill in the form. Type whatever you want. Then submit. And we got the success message over here. So we can move to the next step. Now, to let the admin or the doctor manage the appointment, we need to save them in the database, which means we need to create a new model. So we create an appointment model in the models file. The first field is the first name. It's gonna be character field with max length of 50 characters. same thing with the last name also we have we can save the emails in a character field same thing with mobile numbers we can do it in a better way but this will work for the request it has to be a text field we don't know how much characters the user will enter Then we need to know when the user made the appointment. And we need a boolean field to know whether it is accepted or not. And we need a date field to know when the appointment has been accepted. We will set it manually. Then the str function to display the first name as a reference for the object name in the admin page and a meta class to order the appointments based on the date of creation of that appointment after that we need to register this model in the admins file we import the model then admin.site.register then the, the model so we can see and control them from the admin page in case we need after creation of any model we need to migrate the app on make migrations and migrate it's better to specify the op name
now we have created our appointment table we can create a super user the username is admin we don't need an email and then we choose a strong password now we run the server we can't check it if we visit the the admin page we log in using the super user we created and here we see the appointment mode so in the views we need to import our appointment model then we create a new appointment instance using the create method we pass the arguments we need the first name the last name the email the phone number and the request message then we save it we can also change the success message we can thank the patient for about making an appointment so let's refresh the page and test this out I will make an appointment for myself I write my first name my last name my email my phone number then optionally I can tell about the request submit the form we see an error it's about the accepted date we will update it manually so we should add it blank and null set to true then migrate the app again to save the changes we did now run the server refresh the page and we can see the success message now time to manage these appointments in the manage appointment html we delete the extra code we extend the base template i guess you are used to it now Put the CSS styles in th inside the style block. and block content for the rest of the page then we added a new view for the manage appointment 
we use the same view as the others we change the name and the template name then import it in the URLs and change the path options also in the base template I will update the menu bar I will display the message link, the manage link only for the logged in users or the admins since no one will be able to log in, only the admins. Also to make sure that no no one will use the path of the manage appointment page to visit or manage it we added the login required option to the template view class we set it to true so only the admins will access that page others will get 404 error In order to send some extra data to the template from the view, we can override the getContextData function. We get the context dictionary from the zipper class. Then we update it. I want to send the appointments objects to the template so we need to get all of them from the appointment model Also, I will send the title of the page from here. Then we, run, we return that context. We need to update the base.html so we can display the title of each page. Let's see if this works on the manage page. We can see the title of the page. So it works. Now since we got the appointment from the database, let's display them in the page. We don't need the extra rows, we want only one. Then using a for loop, we iterate over all of them. So here we display the full name, the first plus the last name of the patient. Then we display the day of the creation of that appointment. We use the date format to display only the day. We do the same thing with the, with the month, the capital M here to display the month in plain text instead of numbers. Then display the email of the patient. 
and the phone number and finally the request of the patient now let's see we have only one I will quickly add more appointments and I will be back to you now we have six appointments let's say we have more than 100 we can't load all of them in one page this will make loading it too slow and will affect the performance of our Django app for that we need to paginate these appointments to display a specific number of appointments per page in our class we need only to add it paginate by then choose the number of the object to display I choose 3 here now if we refresh the page we should see only 3 objects but we don't we have a spelling error paginate by not paginated by refresh again still we see no change well this won't work with the template view generic but we can use the list view we import it first then we need to add a few things we need to specify the model we are working with then the context object name which is appointments so we don't need it here also this should be list view now if we refresh we see only three and we can change the other page this way we already have the only two pages now we need to make this work using the pagination under these appointments so moving to the template we will display the pagination div only if we have more than one page we check that using the is paginated method if we refresh the page we should see the pagination since we have two pages now we need to display the number of pages here so we use a for loop for page number in appointments dot page range we display this and each ref is question mark page equals to the page number let's see if this work no it doesn't I guess we need to add a paginator here let's see nothing changes 
well this is not function based view so this should be page object not appointments and now it is working we can access to all the page numbers for the next and the previous buttons we need first to check if the current page has a previous page then we display the button and we need to pass the previous page number in the href same thing with the next page if the current page has no next page then we don't display it let's give it a try if we go the second to the second page we can see the previous page button and if we go to the first page we can see the next page button so our pagination is working as we want now we need to update the view so we can accept appointments choose the date and send email to patients automatically starting with the template i will add a post form for each appointment so the admin can accept the one he choose it chooses also i want to make sure that we display that form only if the appointment isn't accepted for that we created the accepted field in the appointment model and we have the data field here which we need to get its value in the view moving to the manage view let's retrieve the date for from the form then we can display it as a success message only for, for testing again we return the same http response redirect refresh the page 
we got an error we misrode the for loop tag in the manage appointment form let's fix it and try again and we see another error date is not defined okay this should be date not data let's refresh now and we see the success message this is the date we choose right now now we need to get that appointment and update it to do that we need to create a hidden input in the form this input will hold the id of that object then we get the appointment in the backend we use it to get that specific appointment object then we will update it so we use that object to update the accepted field it has to be true now since we accept it and we have to update the accepted date we import the date time module and the accepted date is date time dot now then we save the appointment object next we send an email to the patient to notify him about confirming his appointment we will send an email in the html format not the usual plain text email for that we need to import few things including the Django template context render to string and get template from the template loader using the get template we get the content of the email template we create it and save it in the message variable and using the render method we send data to that template we create a data dictionary we need to send the first name of the patient and the, di the date of accepting that appointment and we pass the, the data to the render function 
then we use the email message again we pass a few arguments the subject of the email the message of the template the sender is the host user we got it from settings and the receiver is the patient we set the content type of the email it has to be HTML and we send that email one last thing we should do is updating the email HTML file We need to display the first na name on the top and we can tell the patient about the date of his appointment. Now let's give it a try. I will accept my appointment choose a date then accept as you see the form is hidden now and if I check my email here is the subject the body of the email I see my first name and here is the date of my appointment I can also update the success message so the admin can make sure the email is sent successfully. One last thing for the, our project is to display the notifications we need to know how many appointments we get the icon is displayed in the base template so to update it in all the pages we need to do the same thing in each view for each page to avoid this duplication we can use the context processors in Django We create a new file in our app. We name it context processors. It will send objects to all the pages. It's like a global view. Here we import our appointment model. Then we create a function. We name it get notification so let's get all the appointments object but we need to filter them we need to count only the known accepted appointments then we count them and save it in account variable we pass it to the data dictionary then we return that dictionary Now, in order to make this work, we need to add it to the con add it to the context processors list in the settings.py file. 
we simply provide the path of the, that function in the context processors we have created. And in the base template, we pass the count variable in here. Now it works. We have only five appointments that are waiting for approval. I will also update the title link to refer to the home page. So let's add another appointment to see if everything is working. And the number of notification has been incremented. And we have three pages here. We can see the last appointment we added. That's it guys, thanks for watching. One last thing, please like the video and subscribe to my channel. It's the only way to support me to create more free videos about Python and web development. And see you soon.